coming. So my talk is the opportunity of open source. And this is like a little weird because it's talking a lot about me, which is slightly uncomfortable. But I've had a pretty cool journey and opportunities because of working with Drupal and open source. And hopefully you could find ways for you to help others or others who are just starting can be like, oh, I can be there too. Um, real quick, my name for anybody who does not know me, my name is Matt Glaman. Um, I do have a blog, mglaman.dev, where I try to write a lot. Um, I am currently a principal software engineer at Acquia. I maintain PHP Sand Drupal, the Composer Lenient plugin, and then started Retrofit for Drupal, and also, also the author of the Drupal 10 development cookbook. Um, so when I was working on this, I knew I was like, I want to talk about the opportunity of open source. And then I was listening to No Stupid Questions, it's a podcast by Freakonomics, and they mentioned this quote, talent is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. And that resonated with me, because I feel like, I, like my story is, you see, like I had some talent, but I thought there was no opportunity for me to be a developer, because of just location. And thinking of people in like, obviously far worse situations, like that is true, there's lots of talent, but they may not get their chance. So before we do dive in, like I want to say, like what is open source? We talk about open source creates opportunity. Um, so like this definition from opensource.com before it went away um, says something people can modify and share because its design is publicly accessible, and it's about that publicly accessible that creates opportunity. So I'm going to walk through my journey from delivering beer to speaking here. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, I did use I was a truck driver delivering beer, but before that. And this chaotic photo, um, this is from 2001 in my room, which I realized my room then was probably as big as our master bedroom now. Um, so I, I was into coding. Like, I found video games. Like, for my, the, I wanted to be a paleontologist, like a lot of kids in the early 2000s. And then I found computers. And I started hacking around with, like, PHP Nuke. I don't know if anybody here has used PHP Nuke X template. I was digging through, like, Dropbox, and I was finding code from, like, 2002 and all this stuff. I was like, wow. I was actually really good at what I did. But I'm from Kenosha, Wisconsin, and I thought that I'd have to move to Chicago or go up to Milwaukee to get a job. And I was like, well, okay. Or go to a big college. And like, things people don't know is I'm a twice college dropout. And then I finally finished. So like, it, it didn't really like see as an opportunity. It seemed like a pipe dream of coding as a hobby, and it's just fun to do. And then I started working with more open source projects. And it opened new doors. Um, this is a picture I took on my last day of my truck. Uh, in 2012, I was like, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I hurt my back, and I know my knees are going to go away. Um, and a local marketing agency had a job opening for a web developer. And I was like, hey, it's in Kenosha. Let's go for it. And I was able to nail the interview because they did WordPress sites. And at that time, I had been doing a lot of WordPress. Like, I gave up on the whole, I will write my own CMS, and I picked up WordPress. So I aced the interview, and I was able to get that job, and then also at that marketing company, build websites for local businesses to grow their businesses because of open source software versus closed proprietary systems. Also there was the first time I wrote a plugin. Um, it's still on WordPress.org, and apparently still works, even though it's like, what, 12 years old for embedding Facebook albums. But I was like, hey, we had to build this, so let's reuse it. You can't actually download it now, though, because I think of like branding and trademark, but it still works. And with that, like, at that time, I had no training or formal education. Like I said, I went to college one year each, and each time I got bored, and it wasn't like, it didn't feel like it was for me or the right fit. But with all that, I was able to be as knowledgeable as I chose to be. I could go online, I could read. I was much better at looking at the open source code and saying, how does this work? I could tinker. I am not a very mechanical, physical tinkerer, but when it comes to like digging in the code, like, that's where I connected, um, which is why I didn't do well in school. And then in 2012, at that marketing agency, we had to build an e-commerce site. They landed this site um, called Just Camo, which was a very big camo store. And we were trying to do this on WordPress, and we, had a, we spent like $200 in like random plugins. Mind you, WooCommerce was a year old at that time, so I don't even know if it was very, how fully functional it was. And nothing worked. And then I went on the internet, and I found Commerce Kickstart. I was like, hey, this looks cool. I was like, holy crap, this is free? Like, I can have a full store for free and just build it. And that actually got me working in the issue queue because they wanted some postal service or UPS and FedEx, and that's actually how I got connected with Andy um, because I started going into the queues, and he was the maintainers for it. 
Um, and that actually led to my first side gigs is working with Andy. And when I was like, I'm good at this. Like I can get paid money more than I'm making to work on the things I'm working on. Um, and that's also when I fell in love with Drupal. I was in the support forums and I was in IRC and I was like, I don't know these people and they're answering questions for me and helping me do my job. Um, I just got really enthralled and it boosted my own confidence in my capabilities. So for those who are looking to get into it, I would say one of the big steps is like get in the issue queue and kind of cut your teeth on it, if you will, and do it in ways that are related to work. I, I've seen a lot of people who want to get into open source and contribute and they just like jump into like the core queue or issues that aren't really associated and like that will honestly lead to some burnout because you might get frustrated, but like just find issues that are related to your actual projects. Or if there aren't any bugs in your project, go like, all right, we're using, like for right now I'm on a project, we're using the next Drupal module. And like, we don't have any bugs, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go take some time and just see what we can maybe improve. And like open issues for it. And if you're like, but Matt, we're, we're not like super big developers, but we're just starting. These are some screenshots of my first issues that I found on Drupal.org where I just took screenshots and said, hey, yeah, I reproduced this bug. Or like, I made a patch renaming countries for the UPS module so they matched like, the actual like terms they use versus Drupal's. It doesn't have to be like this big momentous thing. It can just be nudges to help get it through to get you more confident. I also did a lot of blogging. That's one thing that I enjoy doing is writing. And I happen to have a blog at that time, or st still had my blog at that time. And I wrote like how to set up the FedEx module and a few things. It's a lot easier to do nowadays because we have Medium, Ghost, and we have Dev.2 and Substack, all that. But like. That is contributing if it's open. If it's like an open, accessible, like that is contributing because you're writing content and sharing knowledge. And then from there, <laughs> I got to go to my first Drupal camp. Um, this is one, so if anybody's gonna buy somebody a beer tonight or a drink, it needs to go to Andy because it really is, Andy was the catalyst for my career and kind of set this all in motion. Um, he offered to fly me to Florida Drupal camp. It was either Bad Camp or Florida Drupal camp and or sorry Drupal Camp Atlanta and that was just the easier approach and paid for my flight and like I covered the hotel or my company called the, covered the hotel and that was the big change like that's when I got to meet Drupalist I remember being at the bar with media current, current people that were working on weather.com and they brought me in and we're just talking about it and I was like where am I right now what is happening like I'm learning about weather.com um, so, and I also got to meet Mike Herschel and Mike Nello, um, and just my mind was blown. And that was like, I want to go all in on Drupal there. And that's where, Mike, I, you probably don't remember this, but you talked to a lot of people, but you said, go back and plant the Drupal flag. So I was like, this is great. And you're like, go join a user group, go start one. So I got back to Kenosha and started Drupal 262, because that's our area code. Because I was like, I like this, and I'm going to talk about my friend Justin a bit, but he was also a developer. So I was like, hey, let's just do a user group. Let's see who's here and have some fun. Then I found out that there was one in Milwaukee at Drupal 4 and 4. And I use these as a chance to get to talk, to like start practicing speaking and giving presentations, and also just to meet other people and like network and lower like my imposter syndrome. So if you have a meetup locally, join it. Meet with others. Just flex your skills and be more comfortable with things. And if you're able to, try to run one. I know I can't right now, I have three kids and I just, I'm not good at managing things in that way. So, but if you are like that person, like I can run a meetup, do it. Because you don't know who you're going to help and how it might help you. And with all that practice and speaking, Mike helped me draft my first talk. And I'm wearing the shirt. 10 years ago, so it's really cool to be back here a decade later from where I was, like all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, and I gave a talk about rock and responsive content because we use panels and um, like how there was the moment for Hawkeye. And like I remember that because he and Kendall at Media Current did a similar classy panel style and just got that moment. And so it's really cool to be back here and talking about that. Um, but again, that's, and then at Florida Drupal Camp, so this is where going to a camp showed me who I could be. Because they're like, how much are you making right now? Oh, you can make more than that. You could come here. Like, you could, you could be at Media Current. And I was like, I could get a bigger job and work from home. Because mind you, I was at an office. So 
one of the key things is I don't like the word networking because it's so loaded and contextual, like, but just connect, like go to these events and connect with people because it will create the opportunities and it could just make you be aware of like your value and what you can do. Because after Florida Drupal Camp, I started applying and I ended up at this company called Gaggle, which is an ed tech company. Um, they built a software as a service on, with, on Drupal with Panoply. They had reached out to David, David Snopek, who ran the Milwaukee user group. And David was like, no, but hey, why don't you talk to Matt? And then within a month, I was hired and working at Gaggle, building a software as a service and contributing to Panoply. Probably like my coolest highlight is, does anybody remember the Sandbox Media Multi-Select for D7? No, oh, it's the only way you can do Multi-Select. They paid me to work five days on it and it got merged because that now became part of the media module. And like, that was like my first time getting a taste of like I'm being paid to contribute and build something. And that was all because of going to Drupal 4 and 4 and working with David on Panoply patches and kind of learning how to contribute and being mentored by him. Um, so also a big shout out to David because that was another like big catalyst moment. And I got to work from home, right? Like I've been a remote worker for 12 years now then? 10, 10 years, 10 years. Um, like that's a big deal. And then they sent me to DrupalCon LA, which was like another, like I fell in love with Drupal 8. Like remember like 2015 is when Drupal 8, we thought it was gonna launch and be done. <laughs> um, but I just love the innovation around it. And then I found out at Gaggle that we probably wouldn't be moving to Drupal 8 anytime soon because it's Drupal 7, you know, it needs to be stable. It's a big thing to upgrade. And I was like, but I wanna do more. Um, just seeing all the initiatives, and that was my first DrupalCon trivia, and I got to sit with Jen Lampton, and I was like, oh, you're like a rock star in the community, but you're normal and you're nice. Like, this is great. <laughs> you know, that whole thing where, like, you see somebody, and you're like, oh, they're, like, on this pedestal somehow, and you realize, like, oh, I can be like that. You are normal, and it just breaks down that imposter syndrome. So, like, what I did next is I got back into the issue queue again, but around initiatives, and that's when I started working on the layout plugin. So the big grandeur idea of like putting page manager and panels into Drupal core, I helped with some of the layout plugin stuff, which powers layout builder. And I would recommend like, if you want to take the next step, find initiatives to work on. I know we have a lot right now between recipes, automatic upgrades, um, project browser, thank you. So like get into there, because there's gonna be lots of ways to contribute that aren't just code, like documentation, testing, and just ways for you to work with other individuals because guess what? Those people work at organizations that might eventually be hiring or know of leads that they're turning down. Um, like the case, that's how I got to Gaggle. David turned down a job, handed it off to me. And then I kind of got like the dream job. I remember like working with Drupal Commerce, looking at Ryan and Boy and being like, I want to be them. Like I want to work with them. And somehow, some way, I ended up at Commerce Guys that summer, so I've been really fortunate to be like, I'm gonna make a pivot and latched on to a job. Um, so this is, that's a picture of Commerce Guys North America at the summer of 2015. Um, and then two months later, Ryan's like, hey, do you wanna buy the company out from platform.sh? So for people who don't know, Commerce Guys created platform.sh, and then we spun out and became Centaro. I was like, sure, okay, why not? Like, I get to work with Ryan and Moyen. I just got here and left my job with a 401k and a health insurance, but why not? Let's go for it. Um, and that turned into, like, a huge, huge, obviously, like, it led to a lot of opportunities for me. Um, and that, one of my favorite parts about when I was at Commerce Guys is it just, like, really showed it's not just my story. Every time I see this picture pop up, I get, like, that, like, oh, I want to cry. Um, we had, they sent us a cake, like this agency in Pakistan made a launch cake for us that said Drupal Commerce 2. And it's like, I'm doing this stuff, like, you know, it was work, but I would still do stuff in the morning or at night. And like, I remember showing my wife, like, I know sometimes it's annoying, I might be like talking to Boyan late at night about the naming of a class and on my phone, but like, there, like there's this, like there is this payoff. Um, so I, I love that picture. And then I also wanna talk about my friend Justin that I mentioned briefly. So in 2012, he was a car salesman at the local Volkswagen, and he could build computers. Like, he was technical, didn't code. And when I was at Dooley, like, I was the only developer. Dooley was the name of the marketing firm. Um, I was the only developer, and I was like, hey, I know a guy that I think can get bootstrapped up and learn. So he sat, and he looked at code. He did Free Code Academy and, like, picked up Drupal. 
And I got him hired. I don't know how I did it, but I managed to get him hired with no experience. And then I took him to Gaggle when I was there. And that's where he learned how to do Java because of GWT. Yeah, GWT, GWT is like Google's open source like UI framework with Java. So like he was able to like take that and like be really successful at that job besides just the Drupal part. And then Gaggle actually shut down that product we were working on and he was laid off. But luckily in 2015, he had come to Midcamp with me and met Sean McCabe of Acro Media. And within like a week after being laid off, he got the job at Acro. Um, and he's currently now an engineering manager at Third and Grove and kind of won like 5X's salary and works from home and gets to have like all the nice things. And it's really cool to see that he was able to make that jump because we're in an open source community. We're able to just do, you're more in control of what you want to do. Um, in 2020, I, like with COVID, I left Commerce Guys because it's been five years at the job and I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I'd been thinking a lot about like, I've been given all these opportunities. I wanted to give back a little bit more. So we know a lot of stuff happened in 2020 and 2021. Kenosha was one of those cities that had like a lot of civil unrest. And I was like, I wanted to try to do more in my community. So Bluehorn was my way of doing like a working sabbatical and trying to experiment with open source and maybe doing things with my local um, businesses. Realized I'm not good at time and materials. So it was a very short lived adventure because I'm not, I can't bill my own time very well. But it did let me flip an opportunity for another friend named Justin. He was a technical, could do like all the things at his job, was like project management, some development, like account manager for everything. I hired him as a contractor at Bluehorn Digital and we had a Laravel app and he just picked it up. Like he started working on it. It was Laravel in view, didn't know any of it, but just was able to go, again, it's open source, read the docs, work with it. And as I was shutting down, I connected him with Chris Teitzel at Cellador. I was like, look, I got a guy that I think would be great. And now he's at Cellar Door. He's a technical project manager. And they were able to sell their house, move to the UP, the Upper Peninsula, and like living their best life and go hiking all the time. So it's really cool to see like he was driving 90 minutes plus a day from the Kenosha area to Chicago, commuting back and forth, back and forth, like so many people do. But he got hooked into open source and found that job that let him be remote and like do all the things. Um, and I, I love that. And then come in 2021, after I joined Acquia, and that actually was preceded by the fact at Florida Drupal Camp 2018, so a lot of comes back here. I love this camp. Um, Adam Bergstein was here working on simplytest.me. It's when he had first taken it over, I believe, um, from Patrick, and he knew I did some React stuff for Contrib Kanban, and he was like picking my brain about what the new Simply Test UI could look like. And then I, during my Bluehorn time, that's when I helped port it to Drupal 8 and like get it over the line and running. And then he was like, hey, there's this position at Acquia. And then he told me how much it ranks. And I was like, <laughs> hey. Because it was one, like, I had been technically self-employed since 2015. And, like, I was like, you know what? They got three kids. I kind of like the idea of, like, health insurance, the 401k, and being a little bit more stable and easy. Um, but, and then I got to do work on the community there as well. Um, with the Drupal 10 release, we did... I did a talk at MidCamp that you could find. It was like 180 projects we touched. So it was cool, like, again, my job, being able to, like, do the open source and help people, like, build that. Um, and one thing, by working in open source, is it flipped the script on my interview. Usually with interviews, they're asking you, your talent, what you're going to do. Instead, it was, what do you think you could do for, uh, what impacts do you think you can make? It turned it, instead of them grilling me, it wasn't a grill but saying, okay, now, if you are here, what do you think you could do to make an impact? Because they already knew my technical skill. So it, like working in open source builds your personal brand. So like, people just know, and like once you go for an interview, you can probably get it, or at least have the first steps knocked down. Um, so if there are times like, this is hard, I don't know if it's making an impact, it's a long, it, there's a long tail to it. It will pay dividends. Um, and then through this, so there's one person I didn't mention that did make this possible. There's tons in the community. I've named a few. There's more that I didn't name. Everybody's had an impact. But I did want to give a call out to my wife for this um, because you should have support. I left CJW, the beer, to go to Dewey, the marketing agency, and took a $10,000 pay cut. That's a lot of faith from my wife for that. And also when I went to, from Gaggle to Commerce Guys, I left the employer insurance and she was five months pregnant with our second kid 
Yeah. Um, and of course, like the late nights talking to Boyan and all the travel to conferences. Like, have support with it because you don't want to burn yourself out. And somebody who could say, like, you can do this. Um, that's important. So surround yourself with the right people, too. All right. So that's like kind of my story and how I did it and how the people impacted me. How can we try to distribute more opportunities to others? Like, how can we 10x this? I think that like the obvious one is like be a mentor. And that doesn't have to be like a very overreaching thing. For me, it was David at Milwaukee Group, at the Milwaukee User Group, and just running some Panoply sprints or just organizing it and being somebody I could talk to and look up to. Um, for example, Boyan was a Google Summer of Code student in 2010. And Ryan was his teacher or that he got paired with. And then, look at went to Commerce Guys, built the billing system for Platform.sh, built Com Drupal Commerce 2, and is now Director of Engineering at Platform. I don't know the entire story of Boyan, but I know that like, it seems like his catalyst was that Google Summer of Code working in open source. Um, and then I want to call it like Amy June with all the contributor workshops and like Mike Anello. Like, that's mentorship. You're, you're shepherding and guiding, like being somebody that people can talk to. Um, and like, also again, only do it if you're able. Like you might feel like I want to do it, but like realize I can't be a great. I'm not a great mentor right now because I'm busy. One, I don't know how to stop doing extra work. But like the three kids and family, like I know my time's a little limited. So if your time's limited and you can't, you can't feel like you're going to be a mentor. Just be a friend. Like be somebody's friend that you hang out with, talk with. Like anyway, I was looking through all the old texts from like way back. I'm like it's great. Um, you know, David referring me to Gaggle, and like. Herschel, we had a call, like, that's how I got the own job opportunity, and, like, I was looking at Agilina, and then I was like, hey, I know this guy who might be looking right now, and, like, Mike got a job. So, like, it's things like that, just, like, be friendly, talk, because um, there might be things you can do that would all of a sudden one day, like, oh, hey, I know this person, or, hey, I have this cool idea. Thinking, like, outside the individuals, scholarships and sponsorships. Um, again, like I said, the catalyst was going to Drupal Camp Atlanta because Andy was able to like use some of his business money and send me because I was doing work for him. Um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for that trip. And that's like really wild to think about, like where would I be without that? Or where would I be if Commerce Guys wasn't like, hey, we'll use every DrupalCon as like a company meetup and I got to go to so many and be so lucky to have that. Um, this part's hard because um, I know DrupalCon does have scholarships, but there's also like, I love the who they're targeting, but also, like, I wouldn't get one. And But for DrupalCon, I think that's a great thing, though. Like, DrupalCon is the big one. There should be the more, like, we are going to help lift people up. But Drupal camps, if there's some way we could figure out scholarships to, like, help people take care of the hotel and maybe not travel, it's hard because that then falls on sponsorships and organizations being able, being able to and willing to sponsor um, camps a bit more. But I think that would give us the biggest return on investment to get new contributors in and lower that barrier and uh, keep a thriving community, but also like build jobs and give people like a better life. And tying into that is hiring and discovering new contributors. Kind of like Andy plucking me out of the issue, giving me like, hey, do you want freelance? Like if you see somebody and you have that opportunity, be like, hey, do you, are you looking for a job right now? Like if you're here uh, like if, at camps, like if you find somebody, um, it's a little bit hard because it is like that weird question, like, I know you're working for somebody, but could you work here? <laughs> um, and th there are organizations that do hire and bring people in, like Acquia does have the Drupal Acceleration team, and they are hiring new people like out of college that end up contributing to Drupal without running their first Drupal site, actually. Like, I think a few are working on like automatic updates, but they haven't like built their first Drupal site yet, but they've just been working and contributing on it. Um, yeah. So if there's way, if we could get the organizations to do it, um, one thing that I saw is, or I wanted to get more metrics on, and I didn't have time, is how many people are saying they volunteer for Drupal versus doing it at, at an organization? Because I started volunteering and then doing it as an organization. And one way it's great if everybody's being paid to work on Drupal, but everybody's being paid to work on Drupal because their job brought them to Drupal. If we don't have a lot of volunteers, maybe we have an adoption problem. If our only way in is because organizations are just paying their employees, tracking our volunteers, and again, volunteering and doing your time without pay is like a privilege. Like So in all of this, there is a privilege being able to act on these opportunities. I've been extremely lucky. 
and I did have privilege that I could say, I had fallbacks. I could take the pay cut and know I could go back or have family to support me. All of those times that I did ridiculous things that benefited my career, but I was lucky enough to do it. And if there's some way that we can just acknowledge that volunteering, I think it has come to full circle with that. Like people do recognize that not everybody has free time, but just finding ways to understand that somebody that's contributing may not have all the luxuries you have or find ways to like help them out. I think that with that, we could create and distribute opportunities for more people. And then maybe more people could have a story like mine or anybody else in this room where it's like, hey, my life was transformed. I'm making more money than I thought I would or I thought I'd be delivering beer until I was like 45 and then working in the office there. I didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, so I just want to one say thanks to everybody in the room who does work and use Drupal because in some way you've also impacted this journey along the way. And thanks for coming. I think I got two minutes. Does anybody have questions at all? If not, okay. Yes, Mike. What's next? For me? I don't know. Beer. 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 <laughs> you need to go back to beer. delivering beer. No, I, I know next I want to figure out, like, with PHP saying Drupal, how I can get more people contributing to that maybe and, like, use that as my way of mentoring people because it allows you to level up your PHP skills and not just Drupal. I think yeah. it would be my nice I just have a comment on that. Yeah. I was able to take a team last year that was still coding Drupal 9 as if it was Drupal 7. You know what I mean when I say that? Yeah. And with the combination of Drupal coding standards, so PHP CS with the Drupal coding standards plugin, PHP stand, and then taking two of my engineers aside for a month and having them learn how to write Cypress end-to-end -end testing, we were able to successfully upgrade and make projects coding standards compliant to Drupal 10 in four months. We took That's project. amazing. And I guess that is the next step. The next step for me is like keep finding ways to maybe like amplitude, like PHP saying, I think it's a, as like a tech lead, it's invaluable because it- If you're not using it, you are doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. So like finding ways to like help build tools, you know, the Composer Lenient plugin, so that way people can use a module that says, oh, I only work with nine, but you need to get to 10, like have that. And then retrofit like my new project that lets you run Drupal 7 code and Drupal 10. Just like finding ways to help people like do their job and maybe get skilled up a bit. All right. Thanks for coming.